Welcome to my channel folks. In today's video we are going to see how to deploy and invoke your Lambda functions. In the previous video we saw how to create your projects and how to customize your serverless YAML file and handler.py that is the Lambda function and a continuation of that we are going to deploy it and invoke your function. The, these are the commands that we are going to use. The SLS deploy command is going to package up your function into a zip file and uh, upload to an S3 bucket and once it is uploaded it is going to create a cloud formation template and configure the necessary resources to set up your lambda function. Since it is a cloud formation template your infrastructure is versioned and any changes can be easily identified and you can push newer updates or rollback if something goes wrong. So the other command is we are going to use the invoke command to check whether our function has been deployed properly and we can also invoke the function locally to do some testing. So let us see how we can do that from our terminal now. Here I am in my Visual Studio editor and remember we have made some changes to our body function to say that this is the welcome message that should be deployed when somebody is calling my hello function. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy it now. So all I have to do is SLS deploy and it is going to create a zip file of my directory, upload it to S3 and then create the stack and deploy that stack as well and give me the endpoint. My stack creation is in progress and you can see here it is validating the S3 upload and then it is going back and checking the stack creation progress. And my function is finally deployed and it gives me that this hello function that is deployed under the amazing API dev. So let us go to our AWS console and see what it has done in CloudFormation and other places. Here I am in my S3 bucket and you can see here it has deployed the amazing API dev and if I go inside that it has all the functions, all the necessary code that we needed to deploy into the function. So if I go to my CloudFormation and if I go ahead and refresh my screen and you see that the amazing API dev has been deployed. Let me select that and then go to outputs and here if I just go ahead and see the resources it has set up the lambda function and it has also set up a log group so that all the logs that are generated by running this function will be sent to this log group and it is also version enabled for our lambda function and it has also set up an IAM role that is required to run this function finally the code is put in the S3 bucket and if I go to my lambda dashboard here you can see the function has been deployed let us go ahead and open that and it gives me a friendly hint saying this function is managed by cloud formation stack and we should not be making any changes here. So if I have, go ahead and I have to see the code, click on this function name and if I scroll down, my, it will load my function along with the code. Here it has finished loading my code and you can see here this was the same code we saw in our editor. So the reason that you shouldn't make any changes to the code here is if we make it in our serverless editor that we are using in our terminal and push a new code, CloudFormation is going to deploy the new code and any change that you made here will not persist and it will not reflect in your new deployment. So that is the reason you should not make any changes here and all your changes should be managed by serverless and it should be pushed through your CloudFormation stack. And in case if you want to see any of the other configurations, if you scroll down you can find the lambda role that is being used and then the amount of memory that has been configured and then the amount of time that is also your function is going to run and the amount of timeout that you want to set for your function. So let us go ahead and see how we can invoke this function from our terminal. So to invoke the function the command is something like SLS invoke and then hyphen hyphen function followed by the function name here. My function name is hello so I'm going to type in that and press enter my lambda function in the cloud and get the response and going to tip display it here. And you can see here it brings up the body message which we gave it here and then the status code we also gave here. So this is testing your function in a remotely. So in case if you want to test your function locally and then you want to upload it that is also possible with serverless. So the way to do that is you are going to invoke and then say local and then give the function name. So what happens is serverless is going to mock the way that AWS services are going to perform and this is going to do it at its best. So in this case 
if it is going to be some services like SNS or SES which serverless cannot mock properly then it will not be getting the proper response whereas if services like DynamoDB which takes the JSON file or a file storage at the back end serverless would be able to mock it locally and you can have a very good development in the local environment and then upload your function to the production environment. So in this next video, we are going to see how we can add input parameters or pass parameters to your Lambda function and deploy it in an API gateway as well.